Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Hyperbola equations. All right, completing the square, as I've mentioned before, just a quick review here, is finding the third term of a trinomial. And the goal is to be able to write the third term in a way that you can factor it as one of these squared binomials. Because some of these equation forms require a binomial squared, and we have to make it look like that. So in completing the square, we take half of the middle term and we square the result. So it's a half squared type of rule. All right, now hyperbola formulas, the standard form looks like this. Okay, now the H and the K inside these uh, X and Y groups tell us where the center is. The center would be right there for a hyperbola graph. And the A and the B values here, which are the denominators of these two groups, indicate how wide and how tall um, the vertexes are from each other, all right? In other words, it's A distance from here to here and A distance from there to there, you know, from the center out. And that tells you the distance between the vertexes. And then this part here, as we sort of uh, sketch out this rectangle, that helps us determine the asymptotes. The asymptotes are the most important part because the curve of the hyperbola approaches the asymptotes in those four directions and in an infinite direction, um, but never touch. So they are approaching the asymptotes, but never touch. And that gives us the equation curve, or the, uh, the form of the curve for the hyperbola. So we have to uh, manipulate, use some algebra rules, complete the square, and get these equations in this form. So that's our goal. Let's look at a couple of examples. All right, this equation is in what's called conic form where it's just all multiplied out. We want to rewrite it in the standard form of the hyperbola equation. Alright, so we have to complete the square but we have to kind of do some rearranging first. The very first thing we want to do is to get this constant to the other side. So we're going to add 177 to each side and therefore we'll have this on the right. Then we want to group the x and the y terms together. So x squared plus 10x minus y squared plus 18y. All right, now in the hyperbola formula, we have a subtraction between the x and the y groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor this out, and we're going to say x squared plus 10x, and we're going to want to leave room for a third term because we're going to complete the square right there. And we are going to subtract, actually we're going to factor out a negative 1 because what we want to have is a subtraction sign between these two groups. In other words, that will give us a positive y squared and a negative 18y. All right, then we have to have, again, a third term to complete the square, and equals 70, 177. Completing the square here will be um, half of 10 is 5, and then square it. So we have to add a 25 right there. Half of negative 18 is negative 9, and we square that to be 81. Now, the idea is that we added 25 and we also added a negative 81. See the negative 1 on the outside? Don't forget, that's what we really added. So a negative 81 and a positive 25 is really a negative 56. So we want to make sure that we put that on this side also. Okay, net result on the left is a negative 56 and also put that on the right. Let's factor out these trinomials and that should be x plus 5 squared and y minus 9 squared. 
All right, one more step, and that is to make sure we have a 1 on the right-hand side. So we have to divide everything by 121. We're going to put it in two separate places here under each of these terms. And that will give us our standard form of the hyperbola equation. All right, now notice that that will give us a negative 5, positive 9 center. The a value is going to be 11 because 121 is um, 11 squared and the b value is also 11. All right, let's look at number two. Again, we're going to move the constant over to the other side, so we add 121 to each side. Now let's group our x's and y's together keeping in mind that we have to factor out a negative 1 for the y groups because we have to have a subtraction in between. We're going to complete the square which will be half of 4 is 2 and square it. Half of negative 20 is negative 10 and square it. Positive 100. Now the net result is that we added a 4 and we added a negative 100, right? a 4 and a negative 100. So that's negative 96 that we would add to the other side. That would be 25 on the right. And then we factor out our trinomials here. If we did it right, we should have a squared binomial. And it looks like we do. x plus 2 squared and y minus 10 squared. And don't forget the last step, we need to divide everything by 25 because we want to have a 1 on the right hand side of that equation. So when I do that, I notice that the center is going to be at negative 2, positive 10, and the a and the b values are both going to be 5. So we'd be able to graph this hyperbola if we needed to. All right, now look for the very next video in this series, which will be problem set 5. And I will give you some equations like this to try. See if you can come up with the standard form of the hyperbola. Thanks a lot for watching and share this with others if you think that it will help. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.